What up, y'all? This is Tracy. And Matt. From Nerd Squish. And today, we're talking about Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. It has been so long since we have gotten the chance to talk about Halloween Horror Nights. Absolutely. And I'm so excited yes. that we get to talk about it today. June 16th, 2021 will forever be known as the day that Halloween Horror Nights broke the internet. Basically just Rick rolled us a bunch. That or we're all, like, all of the Horror Nights fans are actually either really stupid or it was all just an elaborate ruse. Who knows? There was uh, all kinds of encoded ciphers in the description. They went live with a, a video that was basically just tons of static. Um, that was, and then the description was basically just all code, and the, um, the title was all code, and everyone's sitting here trying to figure out what the cipher is, and no one could do it. We're all in the comments. Meanwhile, Halloween Horror Nights is just going in the chat saying, figure it out. Long story short, it never was figured out. And then they did it again the following day. So what was it, a little over an hour? It was like um, yeah, it wasn't that, that, like, there wasn't a big span in between. Yeah, and then the following morning, it started as early as around 9 o'clock and went till 12, I think, or 11. Something like that. Yeah, it was like 11-ish. So, it was kind of defeating last night because, you know, it came about, we're trying to figure it out, we we're like, oh my god, I just want to go to bed, I have to go to work tomorrow, I don't even have an announcement, but the good news is that on June 17th, being today when we filmed this, after they did another one of the live videos on YouTube, they finally gave us some, well, sort of announcements. I guess you could say they're announcements. They released the fact that Jack is back, right? And that Jack is everywhere. Take that as cryptic as you want. We have our own thoughts, which we'll share shortly. Uh, and then tickets went on sale. Although they're not the full ticket packages, basically single night tickets, uh, rest in peace tour, behind the screams tour, um, and what else? Is that it? Uh, Express Passes. Express Passes, yeah. Which the whole Jack thing, like, is exciting. Like, I'm super excited to see Jack, but the fact that it already got leaked, I was like, that's, that's, that's all you could give him? That's it? Like, come on. Let's break down what we do know so far. The event is gonna run through September 3rd through October 31st. So it's like quite a bit longer than I think it usually is. As you know, it's been announced that Jack will be back. Uh, we don't necessarily know the full capacity. The only thing we know so far is that he's going to be randomly in the park, which I think the very first year they ever... Oh, thank you, Lily. So the first time Jack ever appeared in the park, this was kind of the same thing. To kind of test the character out, they put him like wild in, in um, City Walk. I was about to say City Park. <laughs> we are not New Orleans. We're in City Walk. And he was just running around in restaurants and shops and scaring people. And I think they're gonna take that kind of concept to where like you don't know where he's gonna be. He's not gonna be just in a scare zone or just in something else. And then he'll also be appearing at the Cabana Bay Icon Lounge Bar situation. What is it called? Twizzle Stick Lounge or something like that? I don't know. But yeah, there's supposed to, and, and some key things for that is that it's not just gonna be Jack, that's gonna be all jacked up and they're gonna have uh, themes, uh, food and drinks from other icons in the past, which would be pretty interesting. Um, which even probably more confirms the fact that we will have a house that has all of the icons, if they're paying homage to all the older icons. If you go to the Halloween Horror Nights website, you they do this every year, they'll put up blocks for each individual house, each individual scare zone, and as they announce them, they'll fill them in. So right now, we have 10 houses. The only one being filled in is in fact Beetlejuice, yep. which we're hoping that, you know, they have similar to what they have last they had last year for HHN Light, but hopefully without uh, like the screens and stuff that they did for like COVID stuff. Like I want Beetlejuice to like be in my face. Make it as weird as you want to. Then as you navigate the website a little bit more, you notice that there is again five scare zones all of which have not been announced. We have speculation, per the speculation map, but none confirmed. Now here's where it gets tricky. We always have houses, we always have scare zones. The amount that we have is the same as we've had in previous years. Yep. However, 
the next two things that are listed on the website. One of them being seven attractions. Yes, attractions. Now, does this mean... How many icons do we have? It'd be interesting. Okay, so that's... I wonder if we're going to have icon attractions. Well, we could. Now, see, here's the thing. We have never actually experienced a Halloween Horror Nights with an icon. Nope. So... I've done my research, I know about them, uh, you know, you've got the uh, storyteller, the director, and different people like that, so I don't know what seven attractions, and then the other thing they have listed is one form of live entertainment. Yeah. There is a, so a show. lily hair that is tickling my nose, why have you done this to me? So typically, the two years that we've been, which was 2017 in 2019, there was two things that could be considered live entertainment or attractions. The first year that we went, it was Bill and Ted's and the Academy of Villains. The last time we went in 2019, it was the Academy of Villains and the um, Marathon of Mayhem Lagoon show. Mm. So, what exactly is seven attractions and what is one form of live entertainment? Live entertainment's got to be a show. Attractions have got to be small, little, bust-out shows. So if you think about the Chucky Scare Zone type stuff that they did in the past, where they have like the area that was very interactive, maybe think about that on a slightly bigger scale, maybe involving an icon, um, or I don't know. I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe it means that we're doing something bigger than just at Orlando or Universal Studios, rather. Maybe we're moving into Adventure Islands. In previous years, the early years, they did that. So it would be pretty interesting to see if that happens this year. I think, I know the first time they ever did it was 2002. Um, I want to say they did it like maybe another year after that. I'm not 100% on that. <laughs> Somebody, I'm sure, will correct me in the comments below. So feel free, just go at it. But I think that would be really interesting for A, the amount of things that they have listed on the website and B, the amount of people that are going to be flooding this place because we didn't have it last year. I think they would benefit from having both Universal Studios and Islands of Adventures, like have all that stuff spread out. You know what I mean? Sell more tickets. There's a lot of speculation maps. Some of the things on there are very exciting to me. Some of them not so much. I'm just excited to see Jack. <laughs> yeah, as, as, fan, as new, I would say newer Horror Nights fans, even though we've done so much research, we know so much about the events. It's very, very exciting to be able to see Jack. So one thing I think that we'll definitely see is I think we're gonna have a Jack stage show. Yeah, I agree. I have to agree because that's kind of been the staples in his years past and they always churn out such good content. So I definitely think we're gonna get that. One thing that I'm curious if this counts as like an attraction or live entertainment, are they gonna bring um, Scare After Dining back? And is that gonna be one of those? It wasn't available for extras now, but on Universal Studios site, they did say that all ticket packages have not been released and more will be coming. And they even said that on Twitter too. People have directly added Universal Studios ha uh, Halloween Horror Nights and they've said that everything hasn't been released. Which is what we're hoping for because we're proponents of the Frequent Fear Pass, the, the Frequent Fear Plus Pass, because it just makes the most sense. And it's, if you're going more than three days in a row, it's just the cheapest option. So a few of the houses that are speculated at this point, besides an Icon house, um, there's, they haven't confirmed yet if the two houses from HH, I get lost in the H's sometimes. I was like HHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHH
with the new series on Shudder, and it's so, so good. Um, we've enjoyed it so much. I would love to see that house and Greg Nicotero come in and do some great things. I mean, can you imagine, like, he's created some phenomenal creatures on that show. And all I'm gonna say is that I wanna see the wear tortoise. <laughs> like, I wanna see the wear tortoise in my face. Other houses that have been, I think, uh, speculated is gonna be um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a speculation, which I think we've seen it before. I, you know, I could take it or leave it. I've seen a lot of it. Mm -hmm. What does excite me is the speculation of Haunting of Hill House. House? House House? Yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about that one as a house. Um, it could be good. I could see it also being very meh. I get really excited about the original houses. I think they they put some of their best work into those. I feel like with a lot of IPs, they try to get the sets kind of close and then they just slap some masks on things. I don't really think you could do that per, like per se with um, with Haunting of Hill House. So I'd be kind of curious to see what they would do with that one. Um, but yeah, I love the series. I just don't know if it would make a great house. I kind of feel the same way as much as I love the series. Uh, because of just like the slow nature of the yeah, show. I, just don't... I don't know, but if anybody could pull it off, it would be universal. Oh yeah. So you mentioned original houses. Mm. I feel like there's a clear divide of HHN fans. They have the people that love the originals mm -hmm. and people that love the IPs. Yeah. I appreciate both. However, original houses are always either amazing or straight trash. Yeah. Because the two years that we went, like some of my favorite houses, um, Deep waters. Dark Waters. Dark Waters. Deep and Waters or was it Dark I think waters? it's Dark Waters. <laughs> dark Waters in 2017 and Graveyard Games from 2019. Amazing. Some of my favorites. Amazing. Because they had the freedom to just kind of yeah. get out there. Uh, what was the other one? Um, what was like the Roman one that I really didn't like? Oh, Something the Blood Pit. Blood Pit Nightingale. It yeah. smelled. Yeah. It smelled like a public bathroom in there it was not no a lot of the ones that are originals like i don't really know anything about them i know they have another one that's for like the carry ohio storyline that'll probably be good those are going to be great anything with those because i think that's any any of those any of the carry ohio stuff because they have a house dedicated to that every year right yeah yeah um I think it's called scary ohio scary uh they also have puppet theater puppet theater yeah which could be great i know that that's the one that we've seen the most scare actors for um, like auditions online because you always kind of scoop that out to see what's out there and there's been there's been a lot of those people doing puppet stuff which was kind of hilarious. So the only other house that I'm cheating and I looked at the speculation map, the only other house that we haven't mentioned that's on the map currently is the Wicked Growth Realm of the Pumpkin. Yeah, so that was originally a scare zone from back in the day I think and it was actually really well received. Um, there's a bunch of pumpkin folks walking around doing scary pumpkin stuff. Um, another house too that we haven't mentioned is going to be the Icons house, which is supposed to be, I think they're saying it's going to be Icons captured. So if Jack's running the event, maybe he's captured all the other previous Icons and he's got control of Halloween Horror Nights and that house is going to have a little bit of Jack, but then you're going to see like captured versions of all the Icons, making them all encompassing for a pretty neat event. Okay guys, so that's what we know so far about Halloween Horror Nights, the 30th anniversary. I'm sure you guys are excited. Let us know which what predictions you think are true. What passes are you buying? Maybe we'll do another video soon. We're talking about what we're doing and how we think you, know, you can get the best bang for your buck at Horror Nights. Definitely make sure to subscribe and um, keep following us because we will be having, like you said, more Halloween Horror Nights videos for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you nerds later.